I am leaving Bandelier National Monument outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Just explored some cave dwellings, wild experience. Anyways, I'm here to review the all new Lexus LX. It feels good to say that after 14 years since the LX 570 debuted in 2007. And now in 2020, well, it's 2022 now, we have an all new LX based off the Land Cruiser 300 platform. And man, it feels good. <laughs> All new from the ground up, this LX600 is on the new F platform for Toyota. It's their new body on frame platform. Of course, it's shared with the Land Cruiser. Of course, it's shared with the new Tundra. And like the new Tundra, this has the same twin turbo V6. It's tuned on premium here, so it produces uh, 409 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. No hybrid option yet. Still has a 10, uh, 10 speed on Mac that we see in the Tundra, so that's good to see. And we're going up this hill, just punch it a little bit, instant response, and it easily climbs these mountain roads. Like, the torque is immense, and it feels good. Like, the old V8, while it was thirsty, it did have a good punch to it, but it was also a lot louder, I've noticed, um, at least in these initial impressions of this LX600. Man, this view is just insane. This vehicle for Lexus is a little bit more special than ever has been, especially here in North America, as Toyota canceled the Land Cruiser. And a part of that was due to sales, a part of that was due to maybe a lack of marketing uh, for the Land Cruiser here stateside. But now the LX is really the only Land Cruiser vehicle that we have here. And Lexus is expecting a doubling in sales as a result because not only is this product fresh, competitive, and really good, it doesn't have the Land Cruiser to take, a, take sales away from it. So what we have is a much more fleshed out lineup for the LX than we've ever seen. In years past, you're lucky if you even saw a two row base version LX, and then most of it was like the luxury package at around like $105,000. Now the new LX is incredible. It has five tiers. You have a base, you have a premium, you have a luxury, you have an F Sport, which technically the F Sport probably sits between the luxury and the premium. I'm driving the F Sport. I'll give you my impressions of what I think about it. And there's also the ultra luxury four seater that has a price tag of around $126,000. And it is an ultra luxury experience. And I'm going to make sure Android Auto takes me home while I'm on the top of the mountain while I have cell service. I'm trying out Android Auto on this new system because I've been using the built-in Lexus system called the Lexus Interface. It shares a lot, not only with the NX, but also the Tundra. All new software developed here in North America for the first time ever for Toyota and Lexus. And it's pretty good as long as you have cell service. And same thing uh, with my Android Auto here is it took a while to calculate, but we got it locked in. We'll make it back to the Four Seasons, a perfect place for the LX. Man, look at this view. I'm, I'm sure, you, I know you guys don't have the 360 view that I do. I need to talk about this F Sport. I've driven three different LXs. I've driven the Ultra Luxury, I've driven this F Sport, and I've driven uh, Premium with 18 inch wheels. And the F Sport comes in with the mesh pattern grille, spindle grille, blacked out side inserts outside of that grille with blacked out fog lights, 22 inch large wheels, which are probably the best looking wheels in the Lexus lineup. I like them a lot better than the Luxury and Ultra Luxury 22 inch wheels, which is the first time we've had 22 inch wheels on a Lexus. So it's cool to see it here on the LX. Definitely makes it look more baller. Doesn't make it ride more baller, maybe handle a little bit better, but I'm telling you guys, the 18 inch wheels on the premium, uh, which was an option with appearance package, stole my heart. That was my favorite vehicle. If you haven't walked, watched my walk around on it, please do so. It also drove much smoother on imperfect roads. Like those 18 inch wheels and much thicker tires not only are better for off-road, which I took that vehicle off-road, it's better at handling the bumps and the cracks in the road. And it's just a smoother, more luxurious experience. These 22s, while they look badass, if you don't have perfect roads, maybe get the 20s or even the 18s. Now this being the F Sport has so much extra treatment to it. 
other than you know the bumper the front and rear bumpers being different and the wheels you have this red interior which i actually don't like it as much as the old cabernet interior which is kind of the deep rich red this is a bright red like we see in pretty much all the other lexus f sports and it feels out of character here on the luxury grade LX. I know the LS has a similar interior. Again, I'm not saying that fits in there either. It's just a lot of red in here, and I like the deeper, darker red like we saw in the outgoing LX570. We have the Hidori aluminum uh, throughout the interior. I actually don't mind. I think it looks kind of cool. And this vehicle has adaptive variable suspension. So we have all sorts of drive modes, comfort, eco, normal, sport, sport plus. It's very rough with these 22 inch wheels on imperfect roads when you're in sport and sport plus mode. I like to keep it in comfort and it's still not even as comfortable as I would say the premium was, was 18 inch wheels in sport mode, if that makes sense. And speaking of that premium, which I took off-roading, that's where this bottom screen comes in handy, where you can see all sorts of information, your, your rotation angles, uh, you can see brake and acceleration force, um, crawl control in here is an absolute dream off-roading this thing is like glamping that's the best way to put it. you know if people like to camp in a luxurious fashion get the outdoors that's what happens when you off-road in an lx it's the glamping equivalent of off-roading and it's outstanding it's pretty much the easiest thing ever the steering is super light uh, they've replaced the old uh, hydraulic cylinder with electric power steering now. Um, even the fan on the engine is electric, electronically controlled and electrically driven. So when you start up the engine, it doesn't have that huge, ridiculous um, fan noise that it sounds like it's you know like a bull charging you. And I forgot to mention the Mark Levinson in here is on another level. 25 speakers, 2,400 watts. The old system had like 19 speakers, and I thought like that's almost as good as it gets for a factory system. No, I can't stop cranking this. And that's any Lexus I'm in that has Mark Lev, which if you're getting a Lexus and you care even a little bit about music, it's worth the whatever price you have to pay to get the Mark Lev. I'll put what price premium is on this vehicle, but my gosh, it is that good. Maybe the best sound system I've heard in a car. And no one's behind me, so I'm gonna hit the brakes pretty hard. Yeah super smooth very linear stops really really well let's get into the acceleration and i'm just in comfort it's so quiet <laughs> i feel like it's, it wasn't giving me the full beans there uh, in comfort mode but that's okay I, and that that leads me to the f sport no matter what trim you get you get the same power the same 409 horsepower 479 pound feet of torque and the f sport just kind of gives you a little bit more it gives you maybe a little bit more sport tuned suspension which i don't like in this vehicle it's rougher than even the ultra luxury uh with also the 22 inch wheels it, it doesn't lexus didn't need to bring an s sport to this vehicle with the off-roading craze i feel like they could have done better by giving us more off-roading variants not an on-road variant i mean do we need we have the ultra luxury which kind of suits that and the luxury which kind of suit that opulent on-roading experience i mean this thing while it drives great and handles a million times better than the old lx i still don't feel that comfortable with it calling it an f sport if you know what i mean the volume knob is a little out of place i would have liked it to be down here where the drive mode select is and the multi-train select which by the way the multi-train select can be in four high and four low now i have found that auto doesn't blow as hard the air that i like it to maybe it's because i have a jacket on so it's insulating me a little bit from the air so i like to do the manual fan which there's this whole screen here uh, for climate control which I love. So this this area right here, really easy to touch and get around with. And I just rest my arm on the shifter and I'm still glad that there's an actual shifter, not some push button gimmick. Uh, it feels like a real vehicle still with the shifter here that I can rest my hand on and also use it as an armrest as I play with the knobs and stuff here for the climate control and uh, off-roading gear. Not only that, I still have manual buttons for heated and ventilated seats and heated steering wheel. That makes me so happy. That's something with the LS drove me absolutely mad, the new LS 500. That vehicle, you had to fumble through the menus to get to the heated and ventilated seats. And some people are saying, hey, Kirk, just press the climate concierge button, it'll take care of you. But it doesn't know what I want. 
all the time. You know what I mean? You do have USBs everywhere in this vehicle. You have a USB-C up here as well as a traditional USB-A. The back row has two USB-Cs, uh, for the second row I should say, and then the third row also has two USB-Cs back there as well. And you also have plenty of buttons back there to adjust the seats for the comfort um, of the third row. You can recline that third row seat. By the way, the third row seat, um, I wouldn't recommend putting anyone over like 5'8 back there. Even though the legroom is better than the old LX, my head was bumping into my roof even when it was fully reclined. So yeah, um, no longer do you have jumper seats either. So that gives you more cargo space when the third row is down, which is awesome. You don't have as much cargo space when the third row is up. And that's where I feel like Lexus still has a hole in their lineup. Hopefully the rumored Lexus TX can provide three rows of space for a family like mine and still give you somewhat decent cargo space, but we just don't have that yet, uh, even though on the LX due to it being on the Land Cruiser platform. But the TX, uh, fingers crossed, is, is going to provide that for the Lexus lineup. I've been trailing this Prius for a while now. I actually met them on the way down, uh, a couple older couple from Minnesota just enjoying the beautiful sights really nice couple but anyways i haven't talked about safety in here it has lexus safety system plus 2.5 so blind spot monitor standard 360 camera standard a heads up display i believe is standard on premium and above so that's awesome it's not the best heads up display i feel like the the brand new nx's luxury grade heads up display is a step above this but this isn't bad by any means it still gives you step-by-step -step navigation uh not with android auto i feel like the NX is did with Android Auto, but it did with the inbuilt Lexus interface navigation, has the step-by-step, turn-by-turn navigation on the heads-up display. It doesn't give me the 3D effect. It's nice and bright. So it is a really good head-up heads -up display, just doesn't feel cutting edge. Um, the MID behind the steering wheel, and I know I'm all over the place in the review because that's just, that's just my style. The MID behind the steering wheel is pretty small, uh, a little seven inch screen or so. It's about the same uh, size as this screen over here. And it's smaller than what you see, uh, let's say in the Tundra iForce Max models with the hybrid. But if you look at the Land Cruiser, the Land Cruiser has this screen. I'm not upset by it by any means. Like I honestly, because I have the heads up display, I rarely am looking down here and I have the tachometer revs as well on my heads-up display. So I never, well, I rarely look down here at my uh, MID. Um, it's good for off-roading. It, it can tell you uh, what kind of speed you are on your crawl control. It tells you what ride height you're in, uh, which by the way, if you have ride height adjustment like the Luxury and the Ultra Luxury, I think it's optional here on the F-Sport. But if you have that, um, those buttons would be right here. And there are four settings now. Um, not only does, when you turn the vehicle off, does it sink down to let you in and out like the old LX, um, you have a neutral and then you have uh, two highs. So the, the second high is very, very high. I believe when you take everything in consideration from the lowest to the low to the highest of the high, you have about six inches of suspension difference of where the vehicle sits. So that's, that's pretty impressive. And looking at all these holes here on the cliff side, uh, you know, there could have been people living in there hundreds if not thousands of years ago. It just blows my mind. It's so bizarre, our, our human history. Anyways, steering wheel, I wish it was a little bit girthier. I'm not gonna lie. You know, does, this F-Sport does have the, the badge on it, aluminum pedals and you know, the, the dimpled shifter and the dimpled steering wheel. But it, honestly, it, this steering wheel, I wish it was a little bit thicker. Um, maybe like the RCF, you know, that comes to mind, has a real thick spongy steering wheel. Now, some of you are probably thinking fuel economy. Well, I honestly can't give you real world numbers without having this vehicle for very long. Uh, I'm at 17 miles per gallon at 52 miles, and it was about the same thing on my last 50 mile trip. So there's a lot of idling in there for me. Um, and there are times where I just, you know, pedal to the metal like this <laughs> and rev it out. Um, so that doesn't help the fuel economy. It's rated uh, combined around 19 miles per gallon, 17 in city, 19 combined, 22 on the highway. So it's a step up and, you know, it doesn't seem like that much better uh, than the old one. But man, the old LX has got like, what, 14, 15 miles per gallon? Yeah, not, not exactly world leading, maybe world trailing. And another thing that upset me about this F-Sport is that it still has chrome on the door handles, chrome on the window surrounds. 
it has chrome on the mirrors and it just makes me sick because you know they've been switching to dark chrome on a lot of their new f sport products look at the new nx for example and then you get into this lx and it's like they completely dropped the ball there but if you get the appearance package with the blacked out grill you know the smaller wheels and you know it, it gives you blacked out handles it gives you blacked out window surround uh it gives you blacked out roof rails uh you know it's just and blacked out chrome on the accents around the the front and rear bumper so like to me that that is more f sport than this vehicle in some ways because it has more sporty aspects to the trim where this still has chrome which is suited more for the luxury trims so there's a sign for los alamos you guys probably heard heard all sorts of things about the u.s government doing experiments there on the atomic bomb as well as many other than my my gosh this view right now with the god rays coming down casting a shower over the valley it's just insane anyways get back on track topic here I feel like it's a good time to summar summarize the new LX. I do expect the new LX to sell really, really well. I mean, the exterior design, like I said, looks really, really good. The interior design, I would not be getting the red. That's for sure. That's just my taste. I love the ergonomics this setup. Some of you guys may not like the dual screen, but I'm telling you, once you're in it, it works really, really well. Might not be the most aesthetically pleasing with a huge tablet screen, but it, it's fantastic in execution. Um, the MID behind here works for me, but I'm using the pretty darn good heads up display most of the time. Engine and transmission, I want nothing more from them. They're responsive for my sort of driving style. Um, I'm getting better fuel economy than I am in the old LX. I have better torque, better power, and you have more options now on the LX. It starts around the same price, around 86, but now it tops off at 126,000 and tiers in between there. This one being just under um, 100,000 or so. And just like any other LX before it, it's incredibly quiet. This might be the most quiet Lexus I've ever been in. And that's saying something because they are, they hold a pretty good standard in the luxury segment for having really smooth and quiet vehicles. And that Tacoma had <laughs> taco in its grill. For the most part, I'm really enamored with this LX. I could do without the F Sport, but I'm glad it's there because there might be some people that really like it. Me, it's not for me. The thing I like most about the F Sport are the 22 inch wheels on how they look, not how they make the vehicle drive. I love the 18 inch wheel option. I think it's a throwback, not only to the Land Cruiser, but of the like the LX 470, which is probably my favorite LX out of all of them. Well, this one might take the cake now, but get it with 18 inch wheels, get it with that appearance package that darkens out all the accents and you have a really outstanding luxury vehicle really smooth really quiet handles the bumps in the road you can take it off road and it'll be a complete peach super quiet man the new lx is fantastic and was it worth the wait uh yeah because the the current lx is already really really good this one just takes it to the next level and there's nothing on this vehicle that doesn't feel a class above uh, compared to the old one and I know that's going to hurt some of you V8 lovers out there but this engine is a better engine at least <laughs> when it comes to power delivery and responsiveness there's no comparison and you can tow 8,000 pounds versus 7,000 pounds of the the V8 LX but anyways guys I need to end it there I cannot cover everything about every single trim level with this LX review I'll see you guys down below I'll try to answer all your questions in the best manner I can the new LX is fantastic. The F Sport, to me, falls a little flat, and it did when they announced it, and driving it kind of confirms that. But I'm gonna start stop harping on the LX. I want Lexus to bring us some more off-roady worthy options, and those 18-inch wheels is a good start. I'm gonna stop there. I'll see you guys down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more Lexus content. You guys know there's more Lexus this year. We've got the RZ coming out. Uh, by the end of the year i'll be driving that as well as the new rx should be coming by the end of the year so i'll be giving you guys hands-on media drives like this cannot wait to share the amazing things coming for lexus the luxury brand of toyota thank you so much for your support without you guys i wouldn't have been able to visit cave dwellings of of our human history just amazing anyways i'll see you guys in the next video and as always peace out mm -hmm.